Today I want to talk about a game called Disaster Day of Crisis for one of my favourite retro video game consoles released almost 12 years ago now. The Nintendo Wii. 12 years ago. Now for me at least, the potential for the Wii was like an endless spectrum of possibilities coursing through my brain back when it was first being shown off around 2006. This is gonna be like games, but we're like, we're in the games, man. Motion controls are gonna allow us to swing swords and, and shoot guns, but like for real. Nintendo was showing off a lot of titles that would take advantage of their new controller, and one of them was gonna be some kind of natural disaster survival simulator called Disaster Day of Crisis. A title being published directly by Nintendo itself and developed by Monolith Soft, known then, and I guess even more so today, for their Xeno series. It was being hyped up alongside a plethora of other big Nintendo games. I remember even owning a calendar in 2007 from the official Nintendo magazine that had the game as the picture for one of the months. With the Wii's motion control promise fresh in the air like a crisp autumn morning, I was set for the most immersive natural disaster simulator of all time. Thing is, after being shown off in 2006, it kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. But just when it seemed like it had been buried and was never going to see the light of day, boom! Late 2008, it just gets released. Well, at least in Japan and Europe. The game was never released in the US, which is a little odd. Some say it's because big man president of Nintendo America Reggie himself just didn't like the game. Said it wasn't a $50 product, which I mean, if you don't think it is, don't charge $50 for it? I mean, you are the one in charge here, right? The game's made already by that point, I mean, you might as well just get it out there. In Disaster, Day of Crisis, you play as Raymond Bryce, a search and rescue specialist who loses his best friend in a wild volcano attack. Dejected and out of the field, Ray is called into action once more when his deceased friend's sister is kidnapped by a group of terrorists, threatening the world with nukes in the middle of the most chaotic series of natural disasters the US has ever seen. This is Ray. I'm going in. Are you nuts? You're just one man. What can you do? There are basically three types of gameplay in Disaster. One, running around getting items and saving civilians with little Trauma Center style minigames. Two, on rails time crisis type shooting sequences where you duck in and out of cover like budget Nathan Drake. And three, Deja vu. I just been this place before. Higher on the street and I know it's my time to go. And they all use the Wii's motion controls for everything. You run with them, you reload with them, you drive with them, you punch boxes with them that sometimes light you on fire and give you watermelon. Classic. This may have been pretty impressive if Disaster had launched with the Wii in 2006, but by 2008, we had all come to realize that the Wii's motion controls were actually fairly primitive on the whole, and that they weren't really all that capable of replicating complex movements. Despite some novelty early on, we started realizing that in most cases, we were just waggling a stick to trigger a button input, rather than the game just letting us hit a button. Nintendo would go as far as to release an add-on the very next year in 2009 to make the motion controls more sensitive and maybe give them some more depth. Because the magic of the original hardware had definitely worn off by the time Disaster was asking us to twist the Wiimote to open doors rather than just letting it be a button press. Of course, the Wii controls are kind of the USP of a game like Disaster. Seeing what wacky thing they're going to be used for next is part of the fun. And sure, using the Wiimote nunchuck to parachute. Hey, come on now, that was kind of cool. And there is one side of the Wiimote's abilities that has aged a lot better than all its other waggle-based functions, and that's the pointer functionality. Which is why the shooting galleries in Disaster are pretty fun, fast and frantic with satisfying gun effects. They also take place within the same game world you can freely move around in when no enemies are present, so they don't feel as disconnected from the rest of the game as they could have. It feels kinda like a traditional cover-based shooter, just when the enemies show up the game slaps movement out of your hands. It's sort of like an arcade machine Uncharted, with faster slices of extravagant action gameplay back to back, set in ridiculous situations, only with a bigger emphasis on managing your character's health in hazardous environments. Avoiding toxic air, managing your oxygen underwater, and maintaining your stamina in general all come into play, but in a very charming, gamey way. Yeah guys, just give me a moment while I down this giant Fanta to up my energy levels. It also has a variety of leveling up mechanics that give Ray better weapons and stronger attributes, which is something a lot of big action shooters were not too keen on implementing in their single-player campaigns at the time. 
It's inoffensive Skinner boxing that incentivizes partaking in all the odd mini games and doing well in combat. What Disaster lacks, though, is of course the extravagant HD visuals and textures of big blockbusters like Uncharted, being confined to the 480p halls of the Wii. The graphical quality seems pretty thinly spread. Sometimes it looks a bit dodgy, and sometimes it looks pretty nice. The art design and aforementioned gaminess try and make up for the lack of hardware power by going for a charming, caricature style, borderline comedic vibe. But in a game all about spectacle like Disaster, you kinda want to be blown away by crazy extravagant visuals when buildings are falling around you and tsunamis are about to hit. You want to feel that scope, and it's all tapered a bit by the old school visuals. Charming and fit to purpose for the gameplay as they may be. Again, by 2008, Wii games that wanted to compete visually with HD consoles realized that the best approach was to go for some artsy, stylized look rather than more drab, grounded aesthetics. I mean, just look at Red Steel 1 versus Red Steel 2. But as I said, Disaster makes up for its shortcomings with charm, and it has a lot of it. Constant to ridiculous, non-stop scenarios come one after the other, the cheesy OST setting the mood perfectly. Just go back where you came from. We won't have to put any holes in you. Sorry, but I just can't do that. I made a promise. You want to click on the next mission to see what happens next, and as I'm about to show you, things usually don't disappoint. Raymond starts out fending off some terrorists in the middle of an earthquake before he's forced into a citywide panic, where fire is consuming the streets and helicopters are hunting him down, in chase scenes that look like what would happen if the Bomberman Act Zero team made a Crash Bandicoot game. You know, if they had decided to remodernize it for the late 2000s crowd. Bandicoot was the title given to the most elite member of the CRASH Crash Special Ops Unit. Now that top soldier is on the run, the performance enhancing drug known simply as Wampa his only fuel. The soldiers you face, of course, are way too into their job. You again! <laughs> so come on, pal! Shoot me! <laughs> it's not long before Ray takes the fight to them, though, at their secret base, just in time for the volcano right above them to erupt. They say Mount Rosalia is showing signs of a major volcanic eruption. I love the President's reaction to this news. Oh, a volcano erupting? That's like the last thing I wanted to hear today on top of everything else. And who the hell is this guy supposed to be? He's just in the terrorist base, and if you talk to him, he gives you a ticket to his shooting range where you can unlock garbage as a weapon. Hey now, I mean the Wii controls aren't that trash. <laughs> Later, you get on this giant cargo plane and this guy inexplicably appears again. Like, how did he get on here? So you think, okay, another ticket. Now he's gonna disappear like the Easter eggy, non-diegetic NPC he is. But no, Ray has to bail from the plane in an epic set piece a second later, and he's still there, hanging on. This is like you buy a gun from the merchant in Resident Evil 4, and then he's just in the background, running away from enemies. They knew they were making a silly game here. There's a section here that feels like it wants to be a fully controllable third-person shooter so bad. It's like run over here, then on rail shooting, then run over here, and then on rail shooting again. Hostages, if you... You know, this guy, he just seems... That unfortunate event and your meddling have ruined a very carefully laid out plan. So familiar. And while I'm at it, maybe I'll kill you. What is it about him? Are you guys picking up on this? <laughs> Guess this match is a draw, Ray. Oh my god, it's Ruben Langdon who played Ken Masters in the Street Fighter series. Come on, let's turn up the heat. You guys ever play the Street Fighter series? Wait a minute, Dan Southworth is here too? Five minutes till that tsunami gets here. We got that long to settle this. Known in gaming, of course, for that one guy at the start of Wolfenstein 2. Okay, I'm sorry everyone, I thought there was no way safer to go where I wouldn't have to mention Devil May Cry than a 2008 Wii shooter. But here we are, Dante and Virgil are here and they play the terrorists. If IMDB is to be believed, Agnes is this guy too, it's a big reunion. You'd go after him even if I said not to. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would. Dan Southworth is supposed to be playing this colonel guy as well, but he doesn't really sound like him at all. Either way, in this situation he has no way of making contact with the outside. I don't know what that's about, maybe there was a mix-up? Rubing Langdon's character eventually starts getting crazier and crazier, and I love it. Nothing's finished. We still have one nuke. 
We can threaten the government again, or we can set it off and have a nice flashy explosion. And He's basically playing evil Dante, and I mean it. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh, I'll tell you. If, uh, you can beat me. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. It sounds like that's what he's going for. Like if Dante went full demon and wanted to wipe out humanity. Say whatever you want. Ugh. Helpless humans can do nothing Ugh. before this natural violence except acknowledge it. If you fear it, then show it respect. Because every disaster Ugh. is like a gift from God. He also lends his talents to probably the best scene in the game. Now tell him, forget about me and save yourself. You're the heroine, right? That's your line. Ray! Kill these jerks and save me! Leave it to me. Come on, you gotta give it to them. That scene was cheeky as hell. Endearing stuff. Reggie didn't like the performances in this game. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh yeah, buddy, okay, what are you gonna do, huh? You got a Metal Gear under there? Oh, I am fighting evil Dante in a Metal Gear. Ah, uh, don't be discouraged. And I'll be honest, I'm having a good time. Fun, fun, fun! Overall, Disaster is a good time. It takes a bit of a lull in the middle with a series of escort missions, but even there, you get to fight a bear, which is cool. I'll be honest, it feels a lot more wholesome in video games to beat up bears with your bare hands, like a nature versus nature kind of thing, rather than gunning one down with a machine gun. Come on, Bryce, that's the easy way out. Fist fight this thing. The game's even got a bit of replay value. You can go through again, unlocking more outfits and weapons. Extra items show up if you try repeating levels, and finding them might sound like busy work, but you might want to do it anyway when you hear Ray's reaction to collecting them. First one. Second one. Easy number three. Funk it forth. It's just a game with a lot of character, and I'm kinda disappointed it didn't get that big a release. I doubt it would have sold incredibly well in North America, but it's the kind of goofy, zany mid-level production that I always get a kick out of because I'm never too sure what's about to happen in them. The Wii was full of these types of games that came and went, and hopefully I get a chance to talk about them in future. They're the kind of games that rarely get ports to newer systems because they're usually tied to the Wii controls that are hard to replicate now, and well, they went under the radar to begin with. But luckily, if there's one thing this channel does well, it's making videos on games nobody asked me to talk about. See you there! You psycho!